It's 172 years old. It's the oldest international sporting trophy in the world. And some of the wealthiest people in history have spent huge sums of money trying to win it. Most have failed. It's caused huge arguments, heated disputes on the water, and bitter legal battles ashore. To even consider trying to win it has often meant accepting that the pitch will be sloped against you before you even start. So why do it? Why does this ornate silver trophy hold such an attraction? What is it about the America's Cup that drives people to the limit? Why is the America's Cup so special? And how does the competition work? Over the course of our series, we'll answer these questions. And to kick things off, we'll take a look at how the competition works. So, what do you have to do to win the America's Cup? The answer is simple. You need to beat the current cup holder in a series of one-on-one -on -one races. You, the challenger, versus the defender. In this case, Emirates Team New Zealand. The America's Cup match itself is only ever between two teams, defender and challenger. To be absolutely accurate, the event is actually between yacht clubs and each side represents one. In the case of the Kiwis, it's the Royal New Zealand Yacht Squadron. The next America's Cup match will take place in Barcelona and start on the 12th of October 2024. It's a 13-race series where the first to achieve seven wins takes the cup. So the match for this prestigious trophy is actually quite simple. The road to get there is more involved. An America's Cup cycle is triggered when a club presents a challenge to the cup holders. Assuming that the challenging club meets certain criteria as set out in the deed of gift document that was drawn up by the original trustees, the process can get underway. This club is known as the challenger of record. and They negotiate with the cup holders as to when and how the match will take place, where it will be and what boats will be used. This agreement is then documented in the cup protocol. In the case of the current America's Cup, the challenge came from the Royal Yacht Squadron in Cowes. Their team is Ineos Britannia, headed up by Sir Ben Ainsley, who was there with Robert Bickett to hand in the challenge and sign the paperwork with the Royal New Zealand Yacht Squadron Commodore Aaron Young. While this is an agreement between two teams representing two clubs, frequently other teams will come along saying that they'd like to challenge for the Cup as well. It's then the responsibility of the challenger of record to arrange for a series of races to establish who will go forward to take on the defender in the match. Depending on the number of challenging teams, the selection series can go on for some time. In this cup cycle, the challenger selection series takes place in September in Barcelona. And there are five challenging teams. But there's more. This time around, in the build-up to the Challenger Series, there are three preliminary events, warm-up acts for both challengers and the defender. Working backwards, the third event is in Barcelona and takes place in the 75-foot custom-built boats that will be used through to the cup match itself. In fact, this will be the first official racing series in these boats. Teams are only allowed to build one of these 75-footers, so even though there are no points counting towards the selection of challengers, there's a lot riding on this preliminary series. The two preliminary events before that are sailed in the 40-foot version of the main cup boat, an AC-40. Aside from being smaller, the key difference is that unlike the custom 75-footers, the AC-40s are all identical. They're one designs. As a result, this racing pitches crews against crews. The first preliminary event was in Villanova. The second is in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, and starts on the 29th of November. There's one other aspect on the road to the 37th America's Cup, and that's the development boats that some teams have chosen to build. 
Under the rules, teams are only allowed to build one AC-75, but they are allowed to build a similar style development boat that's less than 12 metres long. They're called LEQ-12s, standing for less or equal to 12. Not all the teams have chosen this route. Just the British Ineos Britannia team and the Italian Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli team. We came from last campaign with a pretty clear idea where, let's say, we made mistakes, which doesn't mean we're going to win for sure the Cup next year. But um, when we start this campaign, uh, I mean, time is the only thing you cannot buy. So the wish was to start as soon as possible. And uh, the AC40 uh, for us was too late. And also the, the AC40 is a pretty simple boat, not just from a system point of view, but also from a structural point of view, from a design point of view. So at the end you have to choose whatever you feel uh, uh, in terms of design, in process, uh, what, what do you believe is going to be the best for you. No? And we decided to build uh, our own boat. Well, we, we spent less, much less time in the AC40 than some of the other teams, not all of it, but some of the other teams because we decided to build our own test boat and really focus all of our resources on that platform. So our number of days that we sailed in the AC40 is, is quite significantly down. Our priority is on the test boat at the moment. And we've still got some changes, modifications that we're making to that at the moment, actually, as we speak. There's probably a handful of, of modifications to go that will really give us a lot of information for the race boat for the for the 75 footer and then you know to go through the winter that boat's going through manufacturing the components come into play the boats are clearly hugely technical so the fit out of the boat is really important that we keep on schedule with that particularly when you look at electronic components and, and the systems that go into the boat and then we'll get the boat on the water next spring summer in Barcelona and that's a really critical period. You know, we'll have a, a period of time there that we've got to get the boat operating. We've got to maximise the performance. All of the other teams will be doing the same thing. We're not supposed to be sailing against one another, so no one, everyone's going to be trying to figure out the performance differences. And then we'll do this practice race in some point in August, and that will tell us a, a lot about the performance and, and who's going to have a good cup and who's going to struggle. Others have chosen to buy two AC40s and take one of them out of class rules and use that as their development boat. There'll be more on how these boats differ and what teams hope to achieve in a later episode. But for now, the bottom line is, is that while the brand new format of the 37th America's Cup is the same as it's always been, technically speaking, and when it comes to the boats that will be built along the way, it's a pretty complex cycle for the teams. But no one ever said the America's Cup was easy. And even though every challenger goes into it knowing that the odds are stacked against them, in the last 172 years, it hasn't stopped them from trying. The Cup is in the hands of the defender, so he will decide whatever he wants to try to keep the, the trophy in their hands. So, and again, it's nothing new. You cannot complain about that. You know it's, that, it's like that. It's going to be the same eventually if we're going to win the Cup. So, that is the reason why it's a such a historical trophy and, hard, and so hard to win. Mm. A sustainable future. Yamar.